My name is Nicole Wakabayashi. Miguel Campino. Mi Zhang Li. Enriqueta Samarriba. Daniel Cunhas. Lisa Yui. Matthew Cunha. Miao Yue Huang. Stephen Hoven Lee. Andrew Sell. Anna Vita Schrede. Martin Mies. Mark Vihiro Bonen. Pedro Ivanov Pereira. Quentin Oliveira. Abraham Fanus. Stephanie Ping Chong. Paolo Oliveira. Trisha Don Williams. Michelle Powell. And this. Porto. 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 Hi everyone, my name is Marielle Mays. I am the Vice Director of Porto Piano Fest and I'm very happy to welcome you to our fourth live stream of this week. I'm coming to you from New York, from my home, but today we have a special talk and recording presentation from Jean Saulnier. He is from and living in currently Montreal where he teaches at the University of Montreal. This talk and recording session was done, this little small interview was done a couple of days ago, just so that everything logistically could work well and since we have recordings inserted into the talk, but I think you're going to get a wonderful insight into John's musical thinking, his philosophy, and how he thinks specifically about Chopin and Chopin's play el piano, which he got to record on an 1848 play el piano. So these recordings that you're going to hear are all from that time where he was recording on the piano, and you'll get to hear our director, Nuno Marquez, in conversation with him during this live. Without further ado, we are very happy to start with a recording from Jean Saulnier of Chopin's Mazurka Opus 17, number two in E minor. Once again, we're happy to welcome you here. Please enjoy our live discussion. Hi, Jean. Hi, Nuno. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this, uh, this, this project, this Chopin Lyle uh, project? Exactly. So I thought that maybe that would be interesting for the, the students to uh, get the feel of what uh, the play L is uh, like, because uh, everybody's playing so much uh, Chopin, and uh, that's uh, the Chopin's piano. Um, and uh, so that was something that was very important for me. I did the, the, a recording a long time ago, actually, it's almost 20 years now. Um, 
but um, it was just the beginning of you know a different way of thinking about about uh, Chopin for me. Uh, so it was really helpful uh, in, on so many levels. And um, now I listened to the recording and uh, I realized that I learned so many things after. So there's some some things I wouldn't do the the same, but still I'm I'm uh, quite uh, satisfied with the general uh, result because I I think I fell in love with the the, the instrument and made so yeah. how how did you discover this piano? Well, it's uh, totally by by chance because. Um, Actually, I was replacing somebody <laughs> who couldn't do the, the concert. That was the first concert uh, that was made on this piano. That's uh, a friend of mine, a uh, piano technician from uh, Quebec, who've been working on uh, this piano. He rebuilt it completely. I think it took two years to do it. And there was supposed to be an uh, inauguration at the... Um, there was an exhibition at a museum on, on Poland, and there was supposed to be the inauguration there. And uh, he asked me if I could do it. I said, yeah, sure. And I answered uh, uh, what we usually answer. I'll, I'll be there the day before to try it. He said, oh, no, no, no. <coughs> you should come earlier because that's a different piano. And uh, I'm glad I did because uh, uh, there was the first impression is uh, an impression of uh, confusion because you cannot trust um, your habits you cannot trust your technique you cannot trust the distance you cannot trust your conception of the piece so that's uh, at first was pretty difficult uh, and um, actually there's a interesting story because the the builder is, is uh, Marcel Lapointe was um, I was trying the piano at this place, and so he was doing his business, but listening all the all the time and interrupting me to tune a note. Or <clears throat> so he was really uh, listening, and I've been practicing, I guess, for three days, I believe. And so he came to me from time to time. Uh, we were discussing, and uh, <clears throat> at, at the end of the three days, he told me something that. Uh, First, he felt that uh, there was me and the piano, like two different entities that were meeting. And uh, he, he saw in practice that I was in the process of meeting the piano, you know, getting along with it, uh, adjusting and doing things that the piano liked more than. <laughs> and then the, the last day he said, the, the piano was changing. So the lights, they were three steps. So the first confusion, then you adjust to the instrument, and then the instrument is adjusting to you. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that was a kind of a love story. Mm -hmm. Maybe a love-hate. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, so, some things are more <clears throat> difficult because the, the octave is a bit smaller. Right? And uh, there's no double action. The sound decay is is so rapid. At first, you you think it's a problem, but then it's becoming it's a tool that you can use. You learn what to do. Uh, so then, all uh, another a range of possibilities that you usually we not uh, exploring very much on the piano. I wanted to ask you, why did you choose these pieces, these uh, particular pieces? It's just because I love them. <laughs> That's right. I love this. Another reason for it. I just love the Chopin music. And I'm, uh, uh, I, I think that for me, the first ballad is one of the greatest. I think that's the one I, I love most, even even more than the number four, which is so accomplished in a way. But there is something in the, in the storytelling and the drama that is quite amazing in the first one. Uh, so and I, I, always... and I have to say that this is quite a, quite a, a special recording. Um, and talking about the first ballad, let's, uh, let's listen to it. Let's listen to the first ballad number one, Opus 23 in G minor.
After this wonderful music, let's talk a little bit about uh, Chopin and his and his piano, his his playing. Um, would you like just to tell us a little bit about um, the relationship between Chopin and, and the, and the oh, playing? Well, that's the piano he he, uh, he loved best. Actually, the, the other piano that was uh, really famous at the time in, in France was the Erard, and uh, Erard was uh, the Inventor of double action, mm -hmm. so the and um, you don't have any on, on the playel and playel was kind of resisting the uh, the evolution of uh, the in a way playel was really attracted to old values and tradition, and uh, <clears throat> at some point they have to they have to uh, use the double action as well because the advantages are so obvious. Uh, but it was pretty late, and I think they suffered from from uh, doing it very late. Uh, like uh, we're so used to it now <clears throat> that when you do a trill on on any piano, it's so easy to do because you don't need to lift the the, fan, uh, the let the the key go up completely. You can you can trill and stay in the key, so that make it so much easier. And uh, we love that in a play. Yeah, it's impossible. You need to. The key has to go up completely. So to do a nice trill, well, actually, there's some trills in the in the nocturne, and uh, that was quite difficult to do because there's a long series of trills changing on, on notes, and you have to lift the keys completely, and you want to get something very smooth and not a, like articulated like crazy. So that's quite a challenge. But despite of all this, Chopin loved that piano. Uh, more than anyone and um, any other, because he uh, he felt that even Erard, uh, which is a lot easier to play in a way, um, that was dangerous to play this piano because because of the ready-made sound you can get on it. So you can get really lazy and it's still beautiful. So you can get you cannot be lazy on the player. 
we have to take care of things. We have a, a recording of a Nocturne, the Nocturne Opus, Opus 62, number one in B major. Can you tell us something specific about, about this Nocturne, about playing this Nocturne? Well, these are, are very special and uh, not sure because there's uh, a lot of uh, polyphony in it. I, I mean, the role of the accompaniment is uh, really incredible. And uh, it's like uh, Chopin was, uh, is, is very close to Couperin in many ways. And, and uh, some of these uh, Nocturne or, and other pieces as well show the Dutch richness in the inner voices and friction and uh, tensions that are so incredible and are supported with the uh, pedal markings that are also incredible. <clears throat> and um, that's something I like very much. That's incredible beauties inside. inside. The, the melody is beautiful, but it's kind of plain beautiful. Mm -hmm. But what's in the, the, in the middle is like so incredible. What's so, in the inside? I, yes. So let's uh, propose, let's, let's listen to the Nocturne, Opus 62, number one in B major.
What a wonderful recording. Thank you so much for this. Um, so let's talk about playing this piano. Um, what are the some technical resources of the instrument? What are some of the possibilities that it allows you? And what are some of the limitations? Well, let's go, let's talk about first about the kind of limitation, but that can lead us to uh, uh, something put more positive. Uh, so the rapid decay of the sound. <clears throat> That's a problem when you come to the piano and you try to sustain a, a line uh, like we do on a, on a modern piano. Uh, so it doesn't doesn't work because your reflex is to compensate by playing it louder, and it get uglier and uglier. So that's uh, it's impossible to go in that direction. So you you soon discover that you have to shape micro cells and. Uh, and, and check with little weights, little patterns, uh, to uh, obtain a, a line that is quite different. So you have to uh, forget a bit about the long line. So uh, I remember that uh, I was playing the fantasy as well. And I did not succeed so much because I think that I was try too attached with the, to the long line and I kind of couldn't get rid of it and the piano wouldn't let me do that. <clears throat> so, but uh, and this is the first thing you, you realize. So you have to do different, um, to have a different plan. Like uh, when you have something like the last movement of the B minor sonata, that's really a challenge the piano because it, it will get ugly at some point. So you have to use it with little waves and, and go back softer dynamics and build up gradually because there's a limit to the, the intensity on the other hand you have so incredible um, characterization of different registers it's like you have four pianos in front of you so the upper register is like um, actually you understand when Chopin is writing these uh, small arabesques with these little notes it's so amazing and magical on the player because it sounds like a guitar and it's, it's so poetic. So this is incredible. And uh, <clears throat> the middle register is so intense. If you play like around here, <laughs> melody like that on the player is totally amazing. It's impossible. It, sound on, on a modern piano, the melody sounds so um, unfocused <laughs> and uh, they, you have such nobility and you have the bass uh, as well um, that are quite amazing because of the purity of harmonics. So this, you have different pianos. It seems to be a, a problem because uh, with, the, with time we're looking for a piano that is the sound is the same all the way. That's a quality of the piano now. 
No? So if you say, well, this, the sound is changing, we should not be aware of a change on our, uh, 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 of the sound. <clears throat> but on the player, it's changing a lot. So it create, maybe it creates problem, but you have the Chopin's music that is re very well adapted to that. Mm -hmm. And I think he was um, inspired by it. By it's the place by you, you play the music and said, oh, that's why it, it's written like that. Because the piano is, uh, it, it, there was a couple of uh, passages in the, for me, where, where it was really obvious in the nocturne that it was composing the player. Did, did that change, did that fact change the way you play on a modern piano? Yes, well, because you learn, well, you have a different um, feeling for the music. And of course, it can it help as well. I, I would hope that uh, everybody has a chance, every pianist has a chance to try play it because I think it, it brings uh, a lot of ideas different ideas um, and will help certainly when you get them on, on the modern piano. <clears throat> First, uh, we're so used to connect basses. And uh, if you look carefully at Chopin, pedal is not connecting pedals all the time. And uh, today it's difficult not to connect the basses. Why is it? Because the dampers on the modern piano is are so effective that when the sound is cut, it's so abrupt that it seems to be very important. And on uh, Playel, the difference between the sound with pedal and without pedal is less different than on a modern piano. So when you cut the pedal, it's not, it's not that abrupt. And um, so if you look at the Chopin markings uh, with the with the pedal, some uh, we don't do it quite often because we think we know how to put the pedal when we play Chopin. Because we have a feel of yeah, how it should sound and uh, and we like it sounds so much better when we connect the basses. But if you look carefully, he's not connecting the bass as often as we think. And um, so after playing on the play, yeah, you try it on a modern piano, but you have to use the F pedal. Otherwise, mm -hmm. when you cut it too abruptly, it's really not satisfying. From this group of, of works that we that we have here that we're presenting today, what was the the most difficult to play and and, and the, the simplest one for you to, to play? Uh, <clears throat> I was quite happy with everything. I know the trills were something difficult to do, uh, and uh, no, I, I, at that point. Uh, once I was adjusted to the piano, uh, it was a pleasure. I mean, I was playing with sounds, and so I, I didn't. Uh, I wouldn't describe it in, in, in terms of a struggle anymore. After that, the struggle is at the beginning, when you have to change your mind and adjust. But after that, it's only only pleasure. Any any final thoughts on this project on this music? We think uh, Chopin. And the tradition is uh, as make us believe Chopin is uh, very, um, uh, of course, he's very romantic and he was uh, <clears throat> very famous for the sense of online and the bel canto and all that. But he was also rooted in the tradition. And the, the fact that he was, he, he did love the, the play el piano is another proof of that because play el also was a uh, great admirer of uh, Mozart. And, uh, mm -hmm. He was reluctant to use the newer devices, and uh, so Chopin is a bit like that. And you discover that how attached he is to um, polyphony, simplicity, and uh, so I, playing on an old piano like that is helping you to realize all these things. I would like to finish with uh, this. Wonderful, wonderful recording of the, the Barcarolle in F sharp major, opus 60. Uh, I think it's one of the, the great pieces of the, of the piano repertoire, one of the great pieces of, of Chopin, and, and a great interpretation. I just want to say thank you so much for, for, this, for this music. I'm looking forward to next year. I'm sure everything is going to be fine, and uh, we'll be together again.
and with the students. We'll certainly hope so. So let's finish with the Barcarolle in F sharp major of 60 by Jean Sonnier.
Thank you so much again to all of you who are tuned in and joining us from Facebook or YouTube. I want to say the biggest thank you once again to Jean Saulnier. We really hope you enjoyed this music. I certainly did. We hope you're inspired and also encouraged to check out more material and more music and art that we have for you this week. Please remember to go to portopianofest.com to see all of the week's events. Remember that on Friday and Saturday, we have some live events coming to you from Porto. And if you haven't checked out our library of exclusive video recordings, please check out our website, go to our video recordings tab, and you'll be able to see all of the wonderful artists that are being released each day. Today, we had 10 new video releases, and tomorrow we'll have 10 more. And if you've been enjoying all of this material, all of this music. If you've been enjoying our festival this week, we really, really encourage you to support what we do by donating to our festival. So you can see the ticker below gives you some information on how to donate or even more simply, portopianofest.com. We thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, John, and we hope to see you online again later tonight and tomorrow. Have a great evening. <laughs>